dogs, cats, hamsters, fish, heck, even horses. People love their pets. I know so many people who claim to be animal lovers, and I'm sure you do as well. So why when I talk about my pet snakes do I get such a serious and sometimes emotional reaction of fear and disgust from the very same people? Hmm. Hello my fellow reptile lovers. I'm fairly certain that all of us who are fascinated by and love to keep reptiles of all sorts are used to negative reactions from people who find out about your hobby. I've heard everything from, I'm never coming over to your house, to, if I ever see your snakes, I'll cut their heads off. <laughs> Seriously, a good friend said that to me without consideration of the fact that I care for these creatures. Of course, if I had said the same thing about his dog, I'm fairly certain the reaction would have been... Instead of just calling out the obviously illogical reactions, I thought I would approach this topic from a scientific point of view. When I first started to observe these reactions, I'd often ask why. This snake is not venomous. They're calm and docile. It was hard to understand why it was impossible for some to look at the situation logically. It turns out, not really their fault. Evolution. Controversial topic for some. If you're someone who has paintings in your house of humans riding dinosaurs with saddles, well... As humans, we've been on this earth for just a very short time compared to reptiles. Obviously the dinosaurs, but snakes as we know them first evolved on earth over 150 million years ago. Anatomically modern humans like us? only about 300,000 years ago. Humans with similar behaviors like analytical thinking and problem solving, 50,000 years ago. With the first human civilizations only popping up around 6,000 years ago. As each generation advanced, we developed methods of ensuring our survival and protecting our children. Some snakes were a danger to humans for sure. So much so that our minds have been programmed to have a visceral response to them. In simpler times, it made sense to treat them all with the same amount of caution. We were not exactly studying and cataloging these snakes on the walls of our caves. Today, we've identified over 3,000 different species of snakes, with only about 7% capable of significantly wounding or killing a human. With only about five species of snakes that will just straight up kill you. <coughs> Understanding this is important because these evolutionary traits are hardwired. This is why we need to understand and accept these reactions that some people have. Others are fascinated, like me and like you. I'm blown away by the capabilities snakes have developed. My king snake is immune to rattlesnake venom and can eat rattlesnakes. My ball pythons can see heat. My hognose snakes can dramatically pretend to die to ward off predators and make them think they're full of toad poison. We're all trying to survive on this planet, from humans to insects, and it's fascinating to examine the different methods of survival all of the species on this planet had developed. One of my favorite things to say to people is that often the remedy for fear is a little knowledge. In the case of snakes and other reptiles, this is absolutely true. So keep this in mind when you have a friend or family member who reacts with shock and disgust to your pets. I like to remind people of the very important role snakes and reptiles play in the regulation of rodent populations, which protect our own food supplies and keep potentially diseased rodents away from our homes. Ecological superheroes, man. Oh, one last thing. If you have a friend who's bragging or laughing about the snake they encountered and killed out of stupidity, please do me a favor and kick them square in the Hello, my fellow reptile lovers. 